Okay, welcome to this episode of Love Summit. And where are we heading off to? We are headed south again. Where? South. Alabama. Alabama, again. And loyal viewers may be like, well, wait a minute. We watched your Sloss Furnace video. Mm -hmm. You guys have already been in Alabama. What happened? Well, we had to turn around and come back north for our rally. Right. We had a really good time with the rally. You can see here we're setting up the Unit 10. We're doing some grocery shopping to make sure we had all the food for folks. All right. That's a lot of corned beef. We're pretty, hopefully going to be pretty hungry. Yeah, that's 25 pounds of corned beef. They put it into an icebox. Handmade for us. at our local market. Yep. So we're cooking for 62 people. And so the strategy is to buy in bulk when you can. And so we went to the Walmart and hash browns, cheese, eggs, burritos, all of that large size, ugh, large size coffee. Yeah, we debated whether to get crappy coffee, but you know, you're in New England, you gotta go Dunkin'. Yep. We probably could've gone with a local roaster, but. You know, large, larger condiments, all that stuff we got at Walmart. We went with Henry's for our brisket, and we're gonna go to Hannaford's for the good vegetables. Okay, Sin, how on earth do you figure out how much to buy? So I actually went to a website that talked about catering large parties, and this recipe was for 50 servings. And so I jumped off of that recipe and did the math for 62 and got the estimate. All right, so we got a lot of... We got 18 pounds of cabbage, 15 pounds of potatoes, five pounds of onions, five pounds of carrots. We're getting some vegetable broth, deli meat. So I think we're all set. We were the rally host. So we had 27 trailers, I think 58 people or something like and that. And we stayed busy. And we had the unit trailer, so we had all the cookware and stuff that we needed. So this is the inside of our unit trailer. We've had this for quite some time, and it really helps uh, if, if putting together a rally. One of the cool things that our unit has done is for smaller rallies, or maybe something that's just a little bit more calm, we put together rally kits. And so this will have everything. We've got three of these, and it has everything you need, like some food service items, some things like this, all the different kinds of things, from salt and pepper shakes packets, to tablecloths. To pots and pans and mixing bowls. Yes, and so all of this stuff can be checked out and brought back. We've got our unit tents, we've got our burners, our chafing dishes, our big pots for our New England boiled dinner. That is our warming drawer, our warming box. So it's pretty cool because the chafing dishes fit perfectly in that so we can keep things warm, um, additional servings before we bring them out it keeps serve. things cold or warm, correct? Yes, it does. For about four hours. Yep. But still we were responsible for a breakfast, a dinner, and a breakfast. Yeah, so it, we just stayed busy the whole time. You can hear that. This is that stretch of I-81. Oh, I know. It's so bad. New Angola and Hazleton that is just a, it's it's not even North Korea would be embarrassed to have this as one of their roads uh, yeah uh, but anyway so we're heading down to Alabama mm -hmm. this video is going to be a tow day or a towing via video right and we're headed to a harvest host so that should be fun right yes well first we're going to stop off at the promised land state park mm -hmm. then off to the harvest host then to the Clayton Lake State Park so we're, we're kind of headed down a little quick. Yeah, but, but it actually each day is only about 250 miles. So it's not too, too. It, keep, it keeps the uh, days shorter that way. Yes, but we'll show you some of the tips and tricks for us on a tow day, mm -hmm. how that goes. And we've got some fun stuff planned for ourselves. This uh, is starting mid-October, and it's going to take us through early December. And we're going to spend Thanksgiving in Florida again. Yes, and then we'll have another video coming up to show you how we we are actually going to store the Airstream this year so as to be able to take it down south during the winter. So we won't get stuck up north. Yeah. So we like Christmas in Vermont. Yeah, and the, and the whole plan there, of course, is to go to the Tampa RV show. Yep, we'll see so how that turns out. So if you're planning on going to the Tampa RV show, leave a comment below. We'll see you there. Yep, we'll have to figure out where we're going to camp, though. That's the trick. Yeah. So if you have any recommendations around Tampa about that time of year, let us know with that as well. All right, so let's get into this episode as we tow to Promised Land State Park. We are at the Pickerel Point camping area, which is the only camping area that's currently open at this time, which is in uh, mid to late October, at Promised Land State Park. It's just off of I-84, 
uh, about 30 miles east of Scranton. So you can see our campsite there, Promised Land State Park. I would say this is the perfect overnight stay. The site is 50 feet long, so we can stay hitched. You see that here? Staying hitched tonight. And it is absolutely perfectly level. It's got 30, 50, and 20 amp. No water, which is good because it'll keep me from being tempted to hook my water up. But the electric is good because we can run our furnace tonight. It gets down pretty chilly. So this is day one of our fall part two camping trip. And I decided to try something different with the air fryer. And I had two squashes and I'm making squash mashes. Is it mashes. squash is or squash eye? I don't know. I think squash. Plural squash. squash. I think squash is. Yeah. Squash eye sounds pretty cool though. Anyway. I'm going to make squash mash mashies with this, but I thought I would give it a shot in the air fryer and see how it turned out. And look at it. It turned out pretty good. Who knew you could cook uh, squash in an air fryer? What kind of squash is that? That is it's called Delectica. And delectica it's a, or Delicato? I'm, I'm so nervous about pronouncing. Delicata, Delectica, something tomato, like that. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, but it's the striped squash, the green and the yellow striped squash with a little fire burst on the really good ones. So it makes the perfect, perfect squash mashies. So we'll see how this turns out. So as you can see, we started our little Ataki lunchbox for this tow day. We are going to be doing some noodles and I boiled about two cups of water in the Ataki. You can see it's steaming away. And once we get closer to our rest area, I'm going to put some of the noodles in with the little soup package. The only question I have is though is this is vegetarian but it's chicken ramen flavor so that puzzles me. It puzzles me too. So we're we having a good tow day so far. Yeah maybe today now, now is a good time to talk about our route and for people who are heading to New England from the south or south from New England, New York, that area you know we avoid i-95 like it was the plague and so our especially north of richmond yes so our modus operandi is always to go 84 well we will take the new york some traffic yeah it's some traffic as i say that this is our Ooh, this is really slowing down okay um, yeah this is right around harrisburg so this is always a little bit congested but we always take the throughway south the 84 the 81 is the way we go south and I would never take 95 and yeah there's a lot of trucks because there's so many distribution centers centered around Harrisburg and central Pennsylvania because it's a centrally located area uh, my company even had a, a distribution center in Harrisburg so um, but it's definitely the way to go okay you know a little, a bit little of, rough stretch a little bit of a rough stretch a little bit of craziness around Harrisburg but you know, the Shenandoah Valley, that is just a beautiful way to go versus, you know, D.C., Maryland, Baltimore. And just um, the crazy traffic around there. Yes, so we, uh, that is kind of our route. As we heat up our Ataki, we head to our rest stop. That's pretty crowded. Jeez Louise, look at that. Pennsylvania is just... Their rest areas are like, really? Look at this crowd here. Every single spot's taken, almost. There's one right there. One here? Yeah, well, you got, you're gonna bleed for this guy otherwise. He's just kind of sitting there, so this'll do. So Sin, where does night two find us? We are at a harvest host called the Rusty Nail Winery. And we're parked 
Uh, Rusty Nail focuses more on um, cold weather grape varietals, so you're not going to find Cabernets and stuff, but the wines are very are, unique. Yeah, very, very delicious. And it's so interesting, they have a story behind every wine, almost. Right? Yeah, and behind the labels and the, the wines, it was really fun. And that, that's the great thing about Harvest Host, you know, we went in, talked to the vineyard owners, mm -hmm. had some tastings, bought a bottle. Right, and we're going to have one to save for Thanksgiving, and I think. And we actually probably that we... Unless we run out before that, we'll yeah. save one for Thanksgiving, <laughs> which might happen. Well, we'll save it for Thanksgiving because it's got that one was going to be very interesting to try with a turkey, I think. Yeah. So all right. So night two. Night two. Boondocking. Harvest hosting it. And boondocking, and it's going to get down to what? Thirty-four tonight. Thirty-three, thirty-four. So. Yeah, it'll be a little chilly, but good sleeping weather. We'll stay warm, and tomorrow we'll be on our way to Virginia. And I don't know if you're supposed to do this or not when you harvest host, but we've got this little laminated card that says we have permission to park here with our phone number, our member number. Comment below if when you harvest host, if you leave this little card. On your dash. On your dash. I think that's a very polite thing to do. I think so. So here's what's so crazy. I was looking at our amp usage and I was expecting a pretty decent amp usage. I'm like, what the heck? Three amps. And I looked up and Cindy's got the overhead which is our only incandescent light and she's got the disco lights on the stove so let's take a look again let's turn out the incandescent light look at that and let's turn out these stupid disco lights so we went from three to 1.72 you can't turn out the red one though turn out the disco lights can't turn off that red one, which really irritates me. But and now we're back down to below one amp per hour uses, which is always my goal. This was probably the coldest we've ever boondocked at 32 degrees. And to take the heat off, we have our little buddy space heater. Kind of just taking the chill off on a 32 degree boondocking night. So we're continuing our travel days, right? Right, with our tow days, trying to get down to Tennessee as fast as possible. We're staying hitched up. Yes, we're, um, we seem to be jackpotting these mileages. Uh, yesterday's tow was 244 miles. Today's tow is 241 miles. Wasn't so we have time for a campfire when we come in. Absolutely. This is one of our favorite places. This is Clay Tour Lake State Park. It's mm -hmm. right off of 81. And it just seems to be a perfect... It is lovely here. And it's got some very interesting configurations as well. And it makes pulling in very easy. Yep. One tip that I'll say, we're up on two blocks. You can probably see that there. Mm -hmm. And um, we still stay hitched. Mm -hmm. So a lot as of people... As long as we're not too unlevel front to back. Yes. A lot of people will say, well, is that putting stress on the hitch? I don't think so. Maybe it is. But um, as far as I'm concerned, the stresses on the road are always going to be far more than just the static stress of a little bit of tip mm -hmm. one way or much another. Much sharper and much more earthquakey. Yes. And so uh, I think tomorrow's going to be finally we're going to arrive in Tennessee where we can take a couple days break. We're mm -hmm. going to be at kind of like our touring point. Right. And this tow day will be over or this tow trip down south will be over. This quick three day tow trip, but it's been a lot of fun because we haven't taken too much mileage at once. That's a big learning. Usually almost always we've got these 350 or 400 mile days you know we've been here at clay tour after you know coming from south carolina it's 350 yeah. 400 miles and we're just like Bleh. but you know when it's three o'clock in the afternoon and the weather is lovely it's not bad yeah and i think cindy is going to use this awesome campfire to uh make some hobo classic hobo dinners from your boy scout days should be fun all right sometimes cindy cooks gourmet meals Sometimes it's in a gas station. Sometimes it's hobo dinners. Hey, who, can, who says we can't have a gourmet hobo dinner? Maybe it will be, we'll Maybe see. Be. So what else have we got hanging in there, see? That's our new little lantern. Inspired by all the comments on that video that we uh, talked about the hook. So this is the LED version and it's battery powered. Rechargeable, right? It's a lithium battery, yeah. And uh, it's pretty bright, too. Hey, you might not get it from here, but maybe later on tonight we'll check it out when it's bright. And it was great for boondocking as well, inside the cabin and outside as well. Because Ant Man doesn't let lights on when you have battery powered stuff. Yeah. So we're going to do a reveal and see how this turned out. But before that, I wanted to discuss the fact that 
it was so neat that we found out that the new river that we went on our bridge walk actually turns into Clater Lake and that's where we are right now. It goes through Clater Lake and then it comes out the other end. As the new river. So if you As haven't checked river. out that video, you check if you it haven't out. checked out the video for our river walk, good one. All right, so let's go ahead and see if our uh, if Cindy is good at making hobo dinners. So let's see if we're good and if I haven't burnt this to the crisp. Well, maybe a little burn, but not too bad. Rate that not too bad. Right, a little crispy here and there, but we'll see. Just I think the chefs bit. call that flavorful. All right, we're gonna do a big dump right there. That's pretty good, right? Uh, not too bad. See how the other one turned out? It'd be sort of like meatloaf, I think. And if you think Cindy did not do a good job on this dish, you try and make a good dish with Vienna sausage and then talk to her. <laughs> good point. Check out our gas station video where she made a gourmet dinner with Vienna sausage and Funyuns. Well, that one looks good too. So. Okay, that one's mine. That one's yours? Well, the good one is mine. Oh, well, that one has the more meat, so. Oh, okay, I'll take the burn one with the meat then. No, you can take that. You're fine. But to finish it off, we do have some cabbage microgreens, which I enjoy using. And I just think they make a nice little final garnish. We didn't do that in Boy Scout camp when we made hobo dinners. We no. didn't garnish things. No, you didn't garnish things. So should be good and our number one choice for filling up the rv is flying j because they have these dedicated rv lanes so it makes it super easy super uh easy just to pull in there's usually always spaces this one has four rv lanes two here and two where you see those other rvs so yeah flying j not too shabby special rv lanes like it By the way, in my opinion, the only thing worse than a front cap on an Airstream covered in bugs is one not covered in bugs. This Airstream travels, it goes places, and it gets covered in bugs. Well, there you have it. After 859.7 miles over four days, we're at our destination and we're about to have some fun. Yes, and it was a three-day keeping hitched up, right? Yeah, we were hitched up the entire time. We're unhitched, as you can see. For the I'm first... in short pants. Yeah, I'm in short sleeves. And it's finally down south. So we're looking forward to uh, actually doing what we love to do, and that's touring for our fall trip number two. And we're doing what we want to do, and we're just going to bring you along if you like it. Exactly. So, hey, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click the subscribe. And comment below if you've done a long term of hitched up hitched up camping right right just the, what, what some of your tips and tricks are for hitched up camping right because we come out with airstream and rv related videos just like this one every tuesday thanks for watching <laughs>